CataractCoach.com, Cataract Quiz. What does this sign tell you? There's a sign there on the first eye that helps predict issues with the second eye. So here's the first eye. Surgery was done five years ago, and what do you notice? Even with a non-dilated eye, that white crescent is the anterior capsule rim. There's been significant capsular phimosis. So now here on the second eye, look carefully, pseudoexfoliation material. So this patient has pseudoexfoliation, and the first eye had enough issues with pseudoexfoliation that it caused capsular phimosis. Now, luckily, there's no pseudophagodinesis in that first eye. But for this second eye, what should we do differently? Well, of course, we want to have a generous capsular rexus. So when we do this, filling up our eye here with our viscoelastic will make the incision. Let's make the capsular rexus at least five millimeters. And importantly, let's wash the patient in the post-op period. Throughout the first year of post-operative visits, this patient should be dilated at every visit, and we can see if the anterior capsule rim is, in fact, becoming phimotic. And if that's the case, we can use the YAG laser in order to make relaxed incisions in it. So there's a big 5.5 millimeter capsule rexus. We're going to do nice, gentle hydrodissection. I want this nucleus out of the capsule bag. I don't want to worry about putting stress on the zonular support. So we have the nucleus tilted up, and now we can buzz in with the FACO probe and chop this thing into small pieces. And there's a good amount of nuclear density here. At the beginning, the red reflex was so good, we thought it wouldn't be as dense. But here you can see there's a lot of opacity. There's a lot of uh, even brunescence in this cataract. So taking our time here, removing it, doing a lot of chop, and then just buzzing it with the FACO probe, taking out the pieces. And the pieces come down pretty quickly. Now we're showing the video at two times the normal speed, just so we can get through the whole video, start to finish. And here comes the remaining pieces of the nucleus. A little bit more chopping being done. And then at the very end, you'll notice we'll keep the chopper in the safe position. So the rounded, smooth side of the chopper towards the posterior capsule, just to ensure that it doesn't come forwards or touch the FACO tip. So nice and easy, chop, chop, and more chop, and we'll finish that up quite nicely. Now, we're going to switch over to the IA probe here in just a moment. When we do the cortex removal, again, we have to pay particular attention to the zonular support. And the way I like to do that is look at the capsorexis. As I remove the lens cortex, the capsorexis better not move at all. If it does, right, that's a sign of very weak zonular support. And you can easily, with the IA probe, damage and break zonules more and even expose the equator of the capsular bag. So don't do that. Look at the capsular rexus edge and make sure it doesn't move. That looks good. Now, what about lenses? Should we put a different lens in this eye? Should I put a three-piece lens, haptics in the sulcus, optic captured behind the rexus? That may help. But I think in this case, we're just going to opt for the matching single piece acrylic lens that this patient has in the first eye, and then we'll watch the patient carefully in the post eye period. You can also see there's a small eye that's a six millimeter optic, of course, and the optic looks massive in this tiny eye. This is a high power, um, hyperopic patient. This is a lens power of 26 diopters. So cleaning up all our viscoelastic, we're going to finish this case up. So always pay attention to the first eye. The first eye can give you such important and valuable clues as to what you're likely to encounter in the second eye. Of course, you can also hone your lens calculations by looking how the first eye healed up or reacted. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Check out cataractcoach.com, our free teaching website. Sign up for that free daily email. Thousands of you get this free email every morning, and there's a lot of great material to be shared. Check it out.